If there's one car out there that can restore your faith in the automotive industry, letting you know that there is an option out there if you don't want to buy a crossover, it would be the Toyota Camry for 2025. Let's be honest here, the midsize sedan segment is facing an uphill battle, not only because buyers are not interested in buying a car, but also in this particular market, a lot of manufacturers are moving towards hybrid powertrains. And sometimes with hybrid powertrains, they're not enjoyable, but they are fuel efficient. But what about the Camry? You can get both aspects in one package. And that's why I am here, because we have experienced the SE, the LE, and XLE, but we haven't checked out the XSE. And it's finally arrived here at Auto Fair Toyota. And I'm very excited because I think that for a car at around $40,000, this is really all you could ask for and want out of a hybrid sedan. And in today's video, we're gonna check out what the Camry is offering with the XSC. We're gonna check out the exterior, the interior, take it out for a very quick test drive, and see why, if you are looking at buying a fun daily driver that also feels upscale, then maybe taking a look at the XSC might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout and thank you to Auto Fair Toyota in Tewksbury, Massachusetts, for letting me come down here to check out the XSC. Their link will be in the description below, so you can check out their extensive Toyota inventory. Also, for those of you who are new here, I am going to leave a link in the description below to the LE, SE, and XLE reviews, so that way you can compare and contrast all four trims for 2025. So as always, let's begin with pricing. For 2025 with the Camry XSE, you're looking at a starting cost of just below $35,000. And just like last generation, this is the top trim for the model year. Just like we saw with the XLE, with optional packages and equipment, you can easily spend over $42,000. However, one thing I do like about Toyota right now with the Camry is that they're not giving you sticker shock right away because most manufacturers and rivals are gonna be around $40,000 for a top trim. Whereas with the Camry for 2025, you don't have to do that because with the optional packages, you can really spec this car out the way you want it. Or if you just like this car for its looks, you can stay below that $40,000 mark, much like we have here with our model today. It's actually right around $38,000. So it's a great value for a car that is gonna give you some of those luxury attributes and qualities that you're looking for at this price point. Now, of course, you can go with all-wheel drive for an additional $1,500, which we have on our model today. But let's be honest, it's all about the design and styling of the XSE that really makes this car pop and stand out in its segment. Because to have this at $35,000, is quite remarkable. And a lot of manufacturers and rivals have kind of aged up their midsize sedans to target an older consumer demographic. But I think Toyota is going in the opposite direction here. We saw that last generation and they doubled down for 2025. Now we have built our way up to this. We saw it with the SE, the XLE, and now we have it with the XSE with that mesh grill design for the lower portion of the front bumper. And it integrates so well into the design of this car, but it goes one step further than that because there are styling cues for the XSE that you're not gonna find with that XLE and SE. So you will have the ability to go with a two-toned exterior, which matches the gloss black side mirror caps, but also the gloss black side gills and side vents, which really ties everything together to this model. You don't really see that for the other trims. And one thing I can definitely appreciate about Toyota right now is that they're giving each trim its own distinct appearance. And it requires you to take some time to indulge into what the Camry is all about for this generation. And carrying over from the XLE will be the full LED headlights and LED turn signal indicators for an upscale appearance to this sedan. And as we saw across all four trims for the small year, I love the striking body lines on the hood and the front bumper. Again, ties everything together to this car and just makes it look very sporty and athletic. Then making your way over to the side profile with the XSE, you are gonna have 19 inch bicolor alloy wheels. However, you do have that wheel package that we saw with the SE and XLE that I think is most certainly worth going for. I think it's a better design, it looks more aggressive and really ties into what the XSE is all about. Although this wheel package that is standard is very similar to last generation. As I talked about before, you are gonna have gloss black side mirror caps with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then as you make your way around to the back, I do like the color contrasting accents here for the XSE, such as the gloss black spoiler on the trunk. 
but also this nice garnish that connects into the LED taillights. I love that touch, but it goes one step further for the lower portion of the rear bumper, which is gonna be the color matched rear diffuser. And I love that. It makes this car look very aggressive and sleek. And as we saw for other trims, 425, you are gonna have the dual exhaust outlets on the left side of the rear fascia. Hopping inside the Camry XSC for 2025, you are going to receive power adjustable and heated leather trim seats for both the driver and passenger. The driver will receive a heated leather wrap steering wheel, which is a nice touch for a car at around $35,000. Although I am a bit surprised that the driver's side doesn't get memory seat functionality. I would expect that for a top trim, especially right now in the 2020s. However, with the XSC and what Toyota is trying to do here with this model, is that they're not going to throw in everything as standard equipment. You'll have to go with optional packages to get over $40,000. And while some people will disagree with that philosophy, I actually like that because you can go with a car that does feel upscale without having to spend over 40 grand. Now, with the XSE, there is two optional packages, the Premium Package and Premium Plus Package. With the Premium Package, you are going to receive a panoramic moonroof, which will bring in a lot of natural light to the interior. As you can tell, it is quite dark for this review, and I wish I had some of that extra external light making its way into the interior. You're also gonna receive the nine speaker JBL premium audio system to amplify the audio of your favorite music, ventilated front seats, a 10 inch head up display, which I would definitely recommend because it keeps your eyes on the road ahead of you rather than looking down at screens. And then last, you will have the digital key capability. So if you want some of those creature comforts and amenities, for $3,000, that is not that bad of a deal. That will put you just over $40,000 unless you go with front wheel drive. You're probably still spending around $38,39. And then briefly mentioning the Premium Plus package, this is right around $4,000 and will tack on a long list of safety equipment, which maybe is necessary. Maybe some of you guys don't want that out of your car. The one thing I do like though about having the Premium Plus package is having the rear cross traffic alert and also that panoramic view monitor. That I do like. I like having extra camera angles when I am parking on city streets or in a tight garage. Then taking a look ahead of you, you are gonna have that full digital gauge cluster. We went through this with the XLE, so if you wanna check that out, I'll leave the link in the description below to that review. But again, for a car at this price point and when you are comparing it to close rivals, this is fantastic. Now, it's not gonna be as in-depth or as immersive as what you're gonna find with luxury sedans, but for a vehicle in this market, the fact you can customize what you see in front of you and also check out different types of statistics and information is relevant to you, I think that does go a long way. Then taking a quick look at the infotainment system, you have this massive touchscreen here with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. That will pair up very well with your wireless phone charging pad found on the center console, but better yet, with this car, you are gonna have two USB-C inputs and a USB-A outlet if you don't wanna use that wireless phone charging pad. With the screen itself, it is very straightforward as we talked about numerous times with the Camry, but also other Toyota and Lexus products. So unlike what you're gonna find in Honda, Volkswagen, even Ford, this is more trimmed down. This is not gonna be something that is gonna be immersive or confusing. So you are gonna notice the quick access icons on the left side of the screen to get you to different menus efficiently, such as your onboard navigation system, which you can subscribe to. I would say just go with Google Maps or Waze. Also, of course, your radio settings, Bluetooth, your vehicle controls, and then your general settings as well. So this is all gonna be very easy to get acclimated with. Whereas some manufacturers, You'll be spending about 10, 15 minutes figuring out where everything is. So I think a lot of you are definitely gonna like this head unit here. And since we don't have the Premium Plus package equipped on our model today, you are gonna have the rear backup camera with trajectory and also you can go with a 180 degree view as well for better visibility. But no top view camera, no front facing camera, no 360 degree view. So if you're looking for that, you're gonna to wanna to go with that Premium Plus package. Beneath the screen, you are gonna find your buttons for your dual zone climate control, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, AC, front and rear defrosters, fan speed and fan direction. Again, gives you a nice tactile and analog experience here. And I'm so glad Toyota is not moving away from that right now because Lexus is. So I'm glad Toyota is still prioritizing buyers who are looking for more of that old school layout. Then continuing on towards the center console, as I mentioned before, you are gonna have the USB-A and USB-C inputs, your wireless phone charging pad, 
a nice cubby for some smaller items, maybe a couple wallets, smartphones, or tech gadgets. Your two cup holders here. Now I will say though that with the center console, you will have the gloss black trim, which yeah, I know a lot of buyers don't like, but it does give this car more of a sleek appearance and that will match the gloss black trim on the dashboard. Just like we saw with the other trim levels for 2025, you are gonna have your gear selector here with your drive mode selector for eco, normal, sport, and EV mode. You have your auto vehicle hold, electronic parking brake. Then to wrap up the front seating area for the center storage compartment, there's plenty of room for smaller items. And it's also here where you will find a 12 volt outlet. Then for passengers in the back, aside from the leather trim seats, Nothing's different here compared to the XLE. So I was expecting with this trim to get heated outboard seats. Maybe I'm asking a bit too much, maybe I'm being a bit too greedy, or I'm just too privileged at this point because I think heated outboard seats would go a long way and make this car feel a bit more luxurious. But then again, if they were to integrate that, you wouldn't go with the Lexus IS or ES. Now I will say though that when it pertains to interior space, there's a lot of it. Just like we saw across the other three trim levels, you are gonna see right around 38 inches of legroom. And even with this seat adjusted all the way back and somewhat on a recline, I have plenty of legroom here. So I think you can have taller passengers sit back here pretty comfortably. On top of that, since our model does not have the panoramic moonroof, there's plenty of headroom back here. So I don't think taller passengers will be hitting their head on the headliner. Also back here, you will have two center mounted air vents to go along with the USB-A and USB-C input. And then to round out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Then briefly taking a look at the rear cargo area behind the second row seats, you're looking at right on 15.1 cubic feet of room, which is very competitive for a car in this market. If you're somebody who doesn't want a crossover, has no interest in buying one, by going with the Camry, you have that interior space and overall practicality. There's a box back here, and on top of that, I was able to store all my camera gear. So that's three bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod, and there's still a lot more room to stack on more items as well. So if you are going on a road trip with the family or maybe a good friend, you can easily store eight, nine, 10 bags of luggage back here, mostly because this cargo area is deceptively wide with some wider side pockets for some smaller items. And on top of that, for those of you who are wondering, you do receive a spare tire. So if you encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And lastly, for 2025, you are going to receive a 2.5 liter hybrid four cylinder engine, producing a total of 232 horsepower, since we do have all wheel drive on our model today. Now with the XSE, you will receive a sports tuned suspension, which adds a lot of character to this sedan. Now, obviously, it's not gonna ride or perform like a GR Corolla. So you gotta walk into the Camry with realistic expectations. Also, with the all-wheel drive system, it adds some weight to this chassis. Now, some of you might not wanna go with all-wheel drive, nor do you need it, but I do think that with all-wheel drive and that extra weight, it makes the Camry feel like a traditional sports sedan. Now with the ECVT, it does mimic gear shifts quite nicely. Obviously when you are entering highways and passing slower drivers, there will be some droning. However, the ECVT is far more refined than the CVT found in the Toyota Corolla. So it's gonna give you a linear power band and I think will be very enjoyable to drive on a daily basis. On top of that, you can rotate the gears yourself with the paddle shifters mounted on the steering wheel. Now with the Camry in general, regardless of trim you go with, Toyota did add a lot of refinement to this platform in more ways than one, not only with the suspension to accommodate the electric motor, but also you do have a car that rides very smoothly. The suspension is very soft. It goes over the bumps and imperfections very well, but also even when you are accelerating, when you are entering highways, or just even when you're on suburban roads like this, the power band is very linear, making this car feel very satisfying on the roadways as a daily commuter. Now comparing the Camry to its closest rivals such as the Honda Accord, Kia K5, and the Hyundai Sonata, one thing I will say is that with the Camry, it most certainly feels more well balanced. It's not one dimensional because you are getting a car, regardless of trim, that does feel somewhat sporty. And like I said before, it's not gonna be a GR Corolla, it's not gonna be a Toyota Supra, but what it is gonna give you is a lot of engagement and excitement for a daily commuter. In the past, even last generation, but the generations before that, the Camry was solely a economical and affordable sedan. 
2025 adds on a lot more dimensions to that. Yes, it is still affordable. Yes, it is very fuel efficient with the hybrid powertrain, but it also is somewhat dynamic. And you'll feel that with the steering column as well. Toyota gave this car some weighted steering and it really adds to the refinement, but also the engagement. It gives you some feedback in the corners when you are on those back roads. And so many cars in this market just don't provide that. Also in regards to interior quality and the overall driving environment with the XSE, yes, it does feel somewhat upscale. However, it's not a drastic improvement or difference compared to the SE. If you wanna save five grand, go with the SE. The SE would be the way to go. Also, the optional packages and equipment, it makes it, in my opinion, a great value at around 30 grand. However, with that being said, that does not take away from what the XSE is offering here because these leather trim seats are very nice, they're cushioned, and they provide a lot of support. Now, again, like I said before, the bolstering isn't very aggressive, which is something I wish we had because with this being the XSE, I would like to see that to match the exterior looks of this car. But again, at around 40 grand, you can't have everything. All in all, what you have here with the Toyota Camry, regardless of trim, is a home run hit. You can't miss. I personally didn't like the LE because it felt a bit too trimmed down. I think the SE is the sweet spot. Maybe the XLE would be the way to go if you want true luxury. But the XSE though, gives you qualities from both the SE and XLE that I think a lot of you are definitely going to love in a daily driver. Sure, it can be very pricey on the high end at around forty-two to $44,000 with the premium and premium plus packages, but I do think it is worth it if you don't want to spend over fifty grand for a luxury sedan. Sure, technology-wise, this is not competitive to Audi, BMW, or Mercedes-Benz, but at around thirty-five grand to start, when you factor in that it is gonna be economical, that it is somewhat affordable, and you have all the bells and whistles here, I think it's a no-brainer in this market. I really do. I still think it's way better than the Honda Accord. I think it looks better than the Kia K5 and Hyundai Sonata. Sure, Hyundai and Kia have better technology, but Toyota has the better package overall, which to me, makes it the best choice in this segment. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick review for the 2025 Camry XSE. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys next time.